while we are while we prepare the the technical issues uh, let me introduce uh, the different participants of this panel first of all we have Sarai Martin she's got a master's degree in social anthropology and she's preparing her PhD at the university her PhD thesis uh, deals with the uh, or colonial origin um, heritage she's an integral part of the traffickers uh, uh, group she published uh, part of her master's thesis on ethnography and she presented her work in different forums. We also have uh, Yusef, uh, he's a writer from Colonel, a mediator and the director of a group of young people in the center of Barcelona. Yusef uh, uh, writes uh, articles in different alternative um, magazines or journals. And uh, well, we have titles like when, when the mountains walk and no one will save uh, uh, the rest. Um, and we have Montserrat, Montserrat Anguiano. She's an artist and um, an Afro-Catalan activist. Uh, she did this part of her uh, work to make visible uh, women, uh, black women, Afro-descendant women. Montserrat has. Uh, presented uh, her art in different um, places in Catalonia, Madrid, Valencia, well, uh, all over the, the peninsula, and also internationally, like in New York and Equatorial uh, Guinea. And finally, we have Luis Ramoneda, the head of collections uh, and curator of this museum. He's participated in Switch Project, showing a world of inclusion in creativity and heritage. He's worked in ethnography, the museums of cultures in the world, and in the new citizenship. He also is working uh, in the museum uh, to determine the different collections. And with respect to the uh, international origins of collections, he's working with projects like Digital Benin, as we were told before, and groups like IATSIS, Australian Institute of Regional and Street. So now we, I'll give the floor to Sarai so that she can tell us about the experience of the workshops of, of the previous dialogue panels, and then we'll, we'll, we'll ask some questions, we'll open up dialogue amongst the different uh, members of the panel, and then the public will be able to answer questions. Um, I think her microphone is not working. I think that Luis and Montserrat uh, will help me moderate this session. I will. I will try to cut the long story short, uh, but I won't be able to, so I will cut, will extend the long story long. Uh, I would like to start this presentation uh, with intercultural dialogue uh, panels, considering the research group, as Alberto said before. As you can see, and as you know, I don't think the, the slide was not shown, but there was a very nice slide that, uh, well, we see that the research team is sharing a characteristic that is not inverted. And it's, it includes from the very beginning by a group of researchers, both men and women, who are not racialized without any connection uh, with the context of origin, different collections that are part of our intervention uh, through traffic tra uh, traffickants. Uh, they are in the diaspora. And these are the, the basis on which we have the big, the origin of the intercultural dialogue panels, PDIs, as we call them. And obviously, we have the different levels of discrimination and structural racism in universities. There are epistemological limitations. In other words, we cannot uh, uh, do an exhaustive research of these collections with all the branches that this type of research includes because we don't have the knowledge uh, on, on it all. We may know uh, the methods of uh, purchase, the purchasing methods. We can trace how they were bought, but then there is an emotional uh, dimension, uh, and, uh, uh, deeply rooted uh, knowledge of, of these communities in the diaspora that we don't really have. The project stems from the perspective of, of human rights, and it uh, has a lot to do with one of the fundamental complaints in the repair pro and restitution project, cultural restitution projects, P 
people have the right to enjoy their own culture. As Alberto said before, as we know, in Catalonia, it was short ago, we had not asked these diasporic communities or people that can uh, be connect, culturally connected by this uh, heritage that is in, in new museums. What they think, on the one hand, how these uh, elements are presented, and on the other, what do they think about these project, uh, objects uh, being in different uh, areas away from the uh, source of origin. Uh, making uh, this uh, heritage available to the communities is uh, an interest. PDIs were considered uh, as fo a photo tendering, trying to talk about different groups of images, and in this case, of the photo funds associated to the uh, muse museums of, of cultures. And in fact, the initiative comes from some ex previous experiences that, uh, that were developed uh, in the last years in the Observatory of Daily Life. Andres and Pablo, in this case, are the key people there. One of the uh, legs of the community of traffickants. pilot test, taking advantage of some activities that had been organized before and coordinated from the observatory in the framework of an initiative carried out by in the framework of uh, Barcelona CREA. Three more were organized in Equatorial Guinea, one in Malabo, and two of them, and then two more the Museum Victor Balaguer of Pilanova. Up until today, we have carried out, uh, I think, up to 10 intercultural roundtables, and one of them will take place in Bañolas with the community from Gambia, and we are considering about the possibility of organizing some others. The images that we use were coming from the photographic collection and also the factual artifact uh, collection of the museums. And in the case of the Ethnological Museum, these were photographs coming from Guinea, different elements of the museum, including also uh, archives and objects, maps with the different itineraries and the different expeditions, etc. And in the case of some photographies, we were able to trace and co-responsabilize some of the histories and things that happen in some of the exhibitions in a, in a way with the support and the details uh, given uh, because besides the participants, we decided to have an observer uh, which will be part also of the team of research and also a moderator that is not part of the team of research and a little bit in order to maintain these distances from a methodological perspective. And these round tables that were organized and were recorded, as we will see, were made by a range of four, five, seven participants with some exceptions. And the dynamics were that we were inviting them to choose one of the images deployed without any previous criteria on the table. And we were suggesting them and asking them, we were inviting them to explain what was the things that came to their mind, a reflection about what was being represented in the photography or photographies related to the images. And from here, we had different debates from approximation to the pieces and the situations that were pictured in a more nostalgic way, memory and the family and cultural context. We also exchange more precise information about the meanings and social processes of the project's origin and current situation, and also critical reflections about colonial practices of these expeditions that continue to exist today. And also in the ways we preserve 
and we expose these catalogues in the Ethnological Museum and also in other museums. Of course, the different subjects that we dealt with were different depending on the participants and the debates, the way these collections were made, and also related to colonial and neo-colonial processes in Spain and other countries. Since we are talking about the works realized at the MUEC, I will think about the Guinean and Moroccan collections. In the case of the collection from Morocco, we selected some of the objects especially daily objects, which were significant, uh, jewelry, uh, lucky gems, etc., that were obtained from a purchasing uh, policy of uh, the different collaborators along the different expeditions organized in Morocco. But probably the stronger one in these round tables were colonial photographies that were part of the collection where we portrayed the local population in markets and also in different places of the protectorate such as the indigenous guard or prostitutes which were used in order to overcome the refusal of this population to this picture. Many of these images, in fact, are associated to one of the main objectives of the mission of the museum, anthropological cultures. And one objective was art and science, hand in hand, and these sculptures which were made by Serra, some of them uh, was one of the main collaborators of the Museum of Barcelona, together with Uspanyaya in many of the ethnological expeditions of the museum. These photographies, in fact, reflect the use made by the colonial administration uh, to be far from the metropolis, um, but also coming to the museum and not only reflect these uh, devices of colonial space, but also how photography is a testimony of this violence issued by the director of the museum and these collaborators under the umbrella of the power structure of the protectorate. One clear example is in some of the pictures when they dialogue among themselves and they allow us to trace the different procedures to obtain different models for the creation of these anthropological uh, sculptures. And in this way, I decided to not to show the images because, as I will explain, the use of colonial photography well, has given rise to an open uh, debate about the victimization that we will be incurring with in the team of research, circulating and disseminating these images. But let me tell you that in these tables we find some interesting elements that I will not show, but I will explain. And some of the things that were generated in these TDIs. Uh, one of the photographies, a series of four photographies. The first photography where we can see a portrait of four girls being portrayed by Auguste Pañella and Orio Serra, where just by the description of the image, we know that the rehabilitation school was created, a center for social discipline during the expedition of 1954. A second photography with the portrait of a girl that appeared already in the previous photography, dating from the same year in front of the Tetuan Archaeological Museum. And thirdly, a fourth picture with a the person who took the image and of the same girl and which is preserved nowadays in the same museum. So I would like to tell you also, I'd like to show you some of the videos looks like a uniform, yet it's a school uniform because I have a similar picture of my mother wearing the same uniform, although I don't want to generalize.
que te dio la atención de esta foto? Pues diría que las cuatro niñas, quiero saber más que nada eh, el año y eh, en qué lugar está hecha la fotografía y supongo, a ver, yo creo que es el uniforme del cole, del colegio y de las cuatro niñas que estuvieron juntas, pero no sé, por eso me gustaría saberlo. A ver, no, no sé. Parecen hermanas. Bueno, yo me imagino que son hermanas. Y antes iba a decir, a lo mejor está en un tejado, en plan sí. rollo azotea, pero no. Podría ser el patio del cole. No lo sé. Los peinados también llaman la atención. Pero sí, el uniforme. Parece un uniforme. Sí, yo diría que es, de, es un uniforme escolar porque, de hecho, yo tengo una foto en casa igual de mi madre. O sea, con el mismo uniforme y creo que... A ver, no quiero generalizar, pero al menos en el pueblo de mi madre sí que solía ser. es? Aracho. Bueno, cerca de Tánger. Sí, también, sí, uniforme escolar, porque en nuestra, en nuestra época también estudiamos todos eh, en, con uniforme batas, blancas, todos los alumnos. Mm. De aquí, o sí, sea, realmente, que se me la que no te... So it seems, it's not very interesting, but the fact, uh, making hypothesis, because they didn't have the information yet about where the picture had been taken, but then, when you ask, And when all the information is given, they realize how the debate changes. Por ejemplo, la de la derecha me llama mucho la atención porque también podría ser mi madre en la época. Que me llama la atención. No sé si, si lo conocen. Eh, eh, olvidarlo, digamos. ¿De rehabilitación de qué tipo? Está contenta con dónde está, o quizás por el hecho de que le hagan una foto, en cambio la de la izquierda no... No, ¿O no tuvo un buen día o no sé? Bueno, sabiendo que está en un centro, pues no claro. sé. Es como que una es tímida, la otra Exacto. está sonriendo por la foto, la otra no sabe qué hacer y la otra pues está enfadada. <risa> Diferentes estados de ánimo. ¿En qué ciudad? ¿Cómo lo ha sabido? No sé. Es, es, no es montaña que está detrás. ¿no? There are more fragments, it's a shame because I cannot uh, show all of them. I don't know how am I doing with time. If we have time, I can show you more fragments. On the other hand, we also have the TDI about the Guinean collection. And this added some complexities as far as the selection of images due to the composition of the found. And the Moroccan collection is made by objects coming from very specific expeditions organized by the museum, the Guinean collection is much more diverse as far as the procedence of the pieces. In this case, we have an important collection of pieces coming from different exhibitions of the museum, but also structures such as Ikunde, which is the center of uh, animal acclimatation in Kunde, which was working as uh, Jordi Sabatepi, ethnologist and well known for being the one who made a snowflake uh, to Barcelona. This center, as Alberto said, was not only in charge of acquiring and bringing animals to the peninsula, but also recovering pieces of ethnological interest that were sent to the museum. Beyond the task of the museum, we also find other collections which are quite polemic, such as the case of the collection of postals of Núñez de Prado, governor of the Spanish Guinea between 1925 and 1931, but also the museums, Claretian museums of the Catholic uh, mission of Santa Isabel, among others. In this case, Photographies reflected very well, for example, the impossibility of uh, plundering uh, natural resources and uh, resources in the compulsive task of the museum, something that the participants are in charge of placing on the table in these debates. We also encounter different images uncomfortable ones that were placed on the tables, such as the photography of Juan Maria Monet at the government of Guinea between 43 and 49, sitting at a chair and being transported by three or four people from Guinea. I think 
that in reality, just to make a summary, we can highlight three main axes in the debates that took place among the participants. One of them could be the meaning and the use of these objects, this emotional aspect of the pieces and how they had been transformed and the continuity that was given to them. A second axis that is related to the criticism to the same uh, mosaistic institution about the accumulation logics of the museum frame in uh, logic of uh, colonial plundering, uh, material plundering, but also knowledge associated to the practices linked to these objects and resources, about the colonial practices about warehousing and contextualizing and criticizing these collections without knowing how these collections arrive here and without explaining how they were acquired. In this second axis, we can also place the debate about the possibilities of repairing that was conceived from the different TDIs and also in many different ways. And the third axis points to the continuity of colonial violences that we find materialized in the museums and the way they project one or other image and framing a dialogue about these collections. But we also have to say the university institution and the way they carry out research. I would like to show you a couple of videos related to the TDIs of this Guinean collection y que han disfrutado otros, desgraciadamente. Pues un poco esto es lo que yo veo aquí, no veo más. Sí, porque ahora en esta foto estoy viendo la tala masiva de árboles, porque ahora mismo a jóvenes guineanos de mi país, por ejemplo, mi padre es carpintero, ¿sí? y mi padre me decía, no, que si ese palo es tabaca, que si ese es morero o marera o no sé qué, y eso es ceiba y eso es pino y no sé, y me quedaba como, vale, ok, pero los contaba que ya no quedan muchos de tabaca, y yo, yo digo, bueno, pues me gustaría que también les hayan contado a chavales de, de Barcelona, de Cataluña, que parte del aeropuerto de Barcelona se ha construido con madera de Guinea Ecuatorial. Uh -huh. es, y es como que ellos ahí contemplando, como has dicho, el trabajo arduo de los demás, porque los que cortaban esa madera son negros, las que la trasladaban también eran negros. Y después te dice, son maderas que salen de la tierra y no se vuelven a plantar más de estas. Como que al mismo tiempo volvemos a perder parte de nuestra naturaleza, los árboles que se están talando y se están llevando. Yo cuántos árboles de tabaca vuelvo a contar más por el por el bosque, ninguno, pero están aquí reforzando un puerto, ¿sabes? Y es parte de la historia que a nosotros se nos quita y a los de aquí no se les cuenta. Como que lo veo un poquito fatal. Vamos a una interesante para que... I think it's interesting to highlight this relationship of plundering uh, natural resources, but also plundering of knowledge and from the local population. Bien. Eh, esta imagen, si yo la veo en un museo, Siento que está, que está puesta para alimentar el supremacismo blanco. Si no se me contextualiza un texto o si no se me ofrece una contraparte de esta imagen, siento que es como un anuncio de los que vemos a niños africanos en los que se pide dinero. ¿Por qué? Porque yo conozco la contraparte de esta imagen. Y la contraparte es el nacionalismo guineano venciendo al franquismo español y el colonialismo español teniéndose que ir cuando Francisco Macías llega, es elegido presidente por el pueblo de Guinea Ecuatorial. Y estas son las razones por las que en España se silencia todo lo relativo a Guinea Ecuatorial. Las razones por las que España se tuvo que ir en contra de su voluntad de Guinea Ecuatorial. Porque cuando conoces el proceso de descolonización de Guinea, ves que España va alargando, va alargando, que si autonomía, que si provincia, que si autonomía, pero no se quiere ir, pero el nacionalismo guineano recurre a las naciones unidas y el nacionalismo guineano juega a su favor la época de los años... Ve, bueno, eh... I think it's clear that these round tables have become important spaces of debate in order to listen to the objects from the perspective of people and these diaspora communities. Because it's important that the museum stops 
being the one making those objects talk, but people should be the ones related to this uh, cultural heritage and cultural materiality that can speak. So this is an exercise of recontextualizing and re-signifying uh, from the bottom, uh, although this initiative has come from the institutions. I would like, uh, I don't know how am I, do, how am I doing with time. I have time. Um, we uh, expressed two fundamental debates related to these first TDIs, uh, as Alberto has already mentioned, and they are related to a process of internal self-criticism. And in fact, we thought about central aspects to the way we approach research and also the results that come from research. And this is why we organize a couple of internal seminars, one of them about the use of images, which were in which we debated the how uncomfortable these colonial uh, images of archives could be that were being circulated by this TDI and which were expressed explicitly by some of the participants of the TDI. And also the selection uh, of these images started a debate among the different members of the research team, which were the images that could be shown, how are we reproducing epistemological violences when we show images of people who were portrayed without their consent, and how can we show images without reproducing these violences, these colonial images can become tools for the creation of alternative alternatives about the recreation of the colonial past in the museum. A series of questions that uh, bring images as testimonies and how they can become tools of participation and creation of different uh, narrations of the colonial history. And the other seminar about the participation of diasporas, and this is what Alberto has already explained, where we uh, spoke about which should be the level of intervention of those communities, although we thought that these roundtables should choose a consulting group in charge of the debate, which will be the object of this provenance research studies. And from this process of self-criticism and these uh, feelings coming from this round table, which is related to a way of instrumentalizing the different communities, we understood that different mechanisms of participation of the communities in the project could not be limited to the consultative role, but it was rather necessary if the intention of the project was to take steps in order to decolonize the way we do research, that this participation could be a structure and binding without forgetting the issues and limitations which were part of the starting point. And this is why we created these groups of uh, observation, taking into account the functions explained by Alberto. Finally, to conclude, I would like to highlight the importance of bringing this debate to the countries where these pieces come from. This is not something we had foreseen. It was quite improvised, and we were able to organize several roundtables in Equatorial Guinea within the framework of a trip presenting the project to Guinean institutions. This exchange became pivotal in order to establish first to use the knowledge of the legacy that we have in Catalan museums, which is quite valuable for those people, not only from a heritage and artistic point of view, but also from a ritual and cultural point of view. And secondly, to make them participate in the dialogue about the formulas and criteria of the repairing processes and restitution processes of this patrimony. For example, we speak about very interesting debates about the functionality of the different pieces nowadays, other ways of talking about restitution and repair, about the uses that can we can do uh, about these pieces when they came home. And we also question and ask many questions about the content of these museums. And there is a lot of interest in getting to know the results of the research and also all the pieces 
that are included in the museum. I leave it here, and maybe we, we can continue the debate later on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarai, for a very interesting presentation. I think it's very clear all the work that has been done. And Alberto was already mentioning that we have three different groups. On the one hand, the museum institutions that are represented here that have, have expressed their will of action. Uh, related to these subjects, but we also have representatives of these diaspora communities. And we have also mentioned Alberto and Sarai have uh, spoken about this process that has taken place as part of the project in order to understand the relationship uh, among these communities. I would like to ask Josep and Montserrat when they receive this invitation to participate in these roundtables of debates, taking into account that this has happened before many of these changes that has been uh, introduced, the creation of the GOAS, etc. How did you welcome all this? Did you think that maybe it was another uh, way of instrumentalizing all this, which was your experience? Can you please, now that we have the opportunity to listen to voices from the other side. I think it's also interesting to know what you think and the way you experience all this. Hello, can you hear me? Good afternoon. My name is Montserrat Anguiano. I'm an artist and I participated in very interesting roundtables. And how did I receive this information? Well, sincerely, I was very grateful. I say, well, it's time that this happened. We're on the right path because the most important thing uh, in order to be aware of this, we're trying about colonizing art, but also decolonizing our mindsets and this importance given to people who are implicitly part of the community. In my case, I come from Equatorial Guinea. I was born here, but I think it's the right moment if we want to take a step forward. This is the moment for us to be the same community, the one that will explain our own history. Uh, we should be asked. Of course, I don't ask about the goodwill of people doing this, but if you want to have like a reference and you want to invite people from this diaspora, for me, this is a very positive step forward, and I think that this is the right way to go. Um, I'd like to follow this line of, or train of thought. I, I, I was invited by people in whom I trust. Having said this, it's true that we always have a kind of a suspicion, as Alberto said, that it's not maybe uh, an issue having to do like like a, 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 a flower pot experience, as we call it. So we have these narratives that uh, academia or some foundations or some uh, or, or, or where, where, where money comes from. Well, we'll have uh, words and narratives, a way of expressing the projects that will always be part of a, a rational that that, won't, that don't, will not be willing to accommodate uh, some people. But people uh, participating are able to, to, to confront these, these, uh, these powers. We talk about restoring the rights and the, the net worth and the heritage. Your restitution is the, is the word. <clears throat> but no one uh, ever told me how much we want to stretch this, these words. What will be the, the final goal? And uh, how uh, will these words uh, can uh, reach uh, the maximum uh, importance. So in these panels, uh, you were talking about people uh, were willing to 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 push hard, uh, and and we're able to push hard while confronting uh, others, not uh, leaving this as a, a, a tokenization experience. Rather, it should be a political debate. <coughs> We have many starting points that are interesting and pioneering projects, as we could hear now. 
But uh, there are some, some symbolic uh, elements, uh, intercultural dialogue panel. I don't see interculturality anywhere. We have people coming from uh, the same geographical area to talk about some of the works of art that came from the same place. So I think that uh, with these little details, uh, with these elements that we, we see in these debates, uh, well, you, you will facilitate uh, solving uh, errors and uh, that we can be more constructive with having a wider scope. Maybe we can start with, with Luis. How do you think of these activities? Uh, uh, this is, this is a, a tool, I know. But how can they contribute uh, positively to a, 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 a process of restoration? Is it uh, uh, one more tool that is part of uh, an ensemble of activities that ultimately have to lead us to, to the to final goals that uh, will leave uh, things clear? But do you think that organizing two, three, ten panels is enough to achieve this goal? Do we have enough representative re people representing the, these different visions? How do you think this can contribute to a to a good end? Monse would like to express an opinion. As I said before, and this is very important. You know, starting from from scratch, three, ten panels doesn't really matter. This is, this is the beginning, something that we are building all together. Hadn't we started like this, it would be different, but I think we're doing a pretty good job. And uh, as I said before, it should be up to us speaking. We should be asked. Uh, what I think uh, is, uh, you know, following this this train of thought, uh, listening to the, the op to the opinion of, of different people, from people from the diaspora, people who are Afro descendant. I think this is a good starting point. And from uh, well, from here on, we shouldn't forget this. We shouldn't forget this that if we really want to repair uh, things, we should not forget about ourselves. We should always know what what to do. I fully agree with what. Uh, Mushara just said, uh, I believe that uh, we have to learn from uh, our ex previous experiences, work experiences. We are right at the beginning. The museum uh, has been, well, has had a certain trajectory dealing with uh, these topics, but not constantly, uh, not completely. I'm thinking about the Department of, of Education, a uh, department that uh, includes many of these topics, but there's a lot of work to do, a long, long uh, way to go. And evidently, as I said before, considering that we are repairing, restoring things, well, it's so difficult to, to, to say coloniality, for example, this is something that cannot be solved so easily. We cannot say that we have found a solution. We cannot even say this from our institutions. So um, I think that evaluation of it all, and I understand there should be a process of evaluation, different dynamics, evaluating, seeing how the museum, the institutions are digesting and are, are, are learning from, from the lessons uh, all should lead us to, to a more positive scenario. I think this is the, the beginning. I would even dare to say that uh, well, the museum has had the fortune in the last few years to see that there are some dynamics that uh, are leading uh, to, towards that goal. If you let me to continue, for the last few years, um, the museum began working in international projects that uh, uh, well, debated th this topic. This was the first dialogue we had with the concept of, of diaspora, colonialization, etc. So we coincided with other other European groups that, that knew more about this than, than us. They had had previous debates, and here we have to say that Alberto said it very clearly. All this is like a, the big wave. Uh, movement of 
um, colonization uh, coming from the 50s and the 60s, uh, we are reaching uh, a point of non-return that, that leads us to, to a, an area of, of, of heavy work. Local groups uh, um, do uh, an interesting an interesting work they can care generate a similar experience called dialogue with Africa and it was not clearly focused on colonization but it was focused with a concept that was debated um, connected to, to this well, authority con con connecting and museums with authority many movements that criticize institutions and colonialism that, that have taken place and this was well, the, the criticism to, to authority and the recognition of diaspora were practically the two main axes of, of uh, breaking care. And this was uh, the, the first uh, piece of information in this debate. And uh, in fact, we had to consider that the museum does not or, or have the, the authority or shouldn't have the only authority, that's for sure and the authority should be shared with the different communities. Not easy to do. This is not an easy thing to do. And we have not solved this uh, with these dialogues. Not even with three or five more dialogues will need to more work to, to be done. But if there's a way to do things, it's you know, to progress, to advance in that respect. I think that we are on the right track. Understanding that we are at the very beginning of, of, of the social movements that in one way or another are leading and the, the way, and the academia definitely uh, is, 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 is in the avant-garde of the movement. I don't know if you wanted to add something else. No, not really. Well, now that you've talked about, about this, talked about the issue of uh, sharing authority with the communities, what do you think? Uh, uh, because museums uh, are well organized. They are an institution, but communities as such are not a uh, community, uh, a well-organized community. It's quite a virtual community. So how do you think this dialogue can take place between uh, uh, an organized body with protocols with uh, uh, a community uh, that is, is virtual because it's not structured? Uh, well, let me uh, just say one thing about what you just mentioned, the organization of, of this community. I think we are starting to, to become better organized. It's something which is very recent. But let me mention, well, 2015, uh, that was the Black Barcelona movement. Uh, this was a way of, you know, becoming better organized. I would like to expand this. I was born here in Barcelona. I was adopted by a, a, a Catalan family. I had never met any black people. My, my background was totally white till I went to these meetings and I met people like, like me, people that are Afro-descendant and people from Spain, from Catalonia since the 2015 up until now. Uh, I've seen other organizations. We are getting to, to, to meet other, other organizations, people from Senegal, uh, people uh, are, are, are well people are, are, are making this or letting this grow it's quite remarkable this is becoming uh, more material we shouldn't forget that this uh, has well makes makes sense we are becoming better organized I understand uh, what, what you just said there are some organizations that uh, we have a, a cultural uh, group called called uh, um, brown and, and black people, the Afro-descendants, the programming uh, cultural events, a, a person uh, racialized with Afro-descendants or Afro-descendant uh, uh, people who are who were born here. This is taking place uh, here. It seems like uh, the media are becoming interested in, in, in the exotic uh, groups now that we are becoming organized, now that we are creating some spaces. but. Why did we do that? Well, because we couldn't find our, our place. That's why I said that what is being done here is so important. Because we are giving a voice to, to, to people. Uh, and it's true. We have this uh, will of, of, of becoming better organized. 
this is just the beginning. No one will stop us, definitely. Well, I would reformulate this, this question when we talk about a community. What are we talking or where are we talking about? I believe that uh, it's difficult to, to, to do because uh, I think, well, we have to say how to, how to make these this, uh, people, academia, periferia cimarrona, people who are highly uh, empowered and who are generating a content, how can we make these uh, uh, people uh, reach uh, other groups of non-organized people, people who just arrived, people who are looking for some references. Obviously, here I think that everyone could uh, generate a, a brainstorm uh, and we could uh, contribute with, with their own ideas, but there's a uh, there's a lot of work to be done, but these museums, uh, uh, I think that they are missing uh, some racialized uh, staff. Uh, and if I'm wrong, please correct me. Uh, or guidelines uh, to uh, exhibit uh, are racialized people that have to do with the origin of these uh, works or these uh, works of art. I think that we have to share this. Uh, with pedagogical material, I think. Well, I, I, if I've seen I've just seen this, and I think that this is a pretty good material, maybe I, I'll feel surprised uh, to, to, to see all the things Olga Tokazo, Margaret Wood, or white people with blue eyes. I'm, I'm missing Leila Slimani uh, or, or Amanda, uh, the voice of women or, or men that are also related to the content of these publications and that are not Indo-Europeans. So I think that we have some starting points, some good starting points. We have the well. Uh, we you know, have the possibility of reaching a, a wider group of people, definitely. That should be so. Sarai, maybe you could tell me more about it. We had uh, the, the panels here and then we had them in, in Guinea, what are where the differences or, or, or similarities between panels organized here and panels organized there? Because the question that I wanted to ask is the following: Considering that we have these uh, differences between uh, origin people in, in, in panels organized in the in the diaspora and people uh, and, and panels organized in the countries of origin, well, how can we organize all this information? Because the positioning with respect to uh, a, po a possible restitution process can be very different in one place or in the other. Could you maybe just uh, explain us more about it? Maybe you could tell us more about this, yes. It's not uh, highly systematized, but in fact, uh, uh, well, the use of this information when thinking about, can you hear me? to see uh, what use of the uh, what is the use of information the differences between uh, uh, the different panels uh, in one place or the other I would leave this the answer to to the museums and in fact there were many points in, in common but there were some substantial differences that were interesting definitely and that won't be able to to make a long list uh, trying to show these differences, but here I had the, the feeling, and, and, and some people in, in the team saw that. Uh, well, you, you, that there are there's more information. I got, got the feeling that PDI's uh, uh, these groups uh, of the Guinean community in, in Catalonia will had a deeper knowledge of all this issue having to do with the restitution and, 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 and compensation and the criticism and uh, they were um, they had a lot more to do with uh, opening up the debate on how uh, the museum approach should be uh, reshaped the different possibilities of, of compensation but I got the feeling that in Guinea both in Bat as well as in Malawo well, having a much uh, closer uh, knowledge, a uh, more daily knowledge about the the state of the art, the situation, 
included uh, a debate between whether or not restituting or compensating. It was very clear uh, that it's, well, it's not so easy to, to talk about restitution in terms, uh, as Alberto said before, in, in bilateral terms from state to state. In fact, it was very surprising to see all these considerations of some of the participants who said, directly said that maybe it wouldn't be a, such a good idea that some uh, uh, pieces came back to Guinea. Maybe, uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me. But, 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 but not returning then these pieces to, to the source of origin. It's a very complex debate, I know. But uh, the, the kind of use that one, the, the Guinean state could do with respect to some of the pieces that could uh, also have a ritual functionality, um, uh, I would have uh, uh, a lot to say, or they would have a lot to say about the uses and the meaning of, of objects that uh, are used in, in, in there, because many of them have a daily use. They also talked a lot about. Uh, well, they, they, well, they had lots of people who, who had very updated information about restitution. Do we have time to show a, a small video? I forgot about this uh, before, but uh, I think that. Uh, que es la idea con la que yo manejo toda esta información. Dos, el proceso de restitución no es un proceso que se decide de la noche a la mañana, es un proceso largo que implica efectivamente que se sepa qué es lo que tiene un valor para ser restituido y en qué condiciones el propietario o usufructuario actual estaría disponible para devolverlo y cuáles son las condiciones y las características que reúne aquel que reclama la restitución. Entonces, yo pienso que esto, y lo tercero es efectivamente aceptar que aquellos bienes que su día tuvieran algún valor religioso, cultural, etcétera, etcétera, aceptemos su muerte y que si se restituyen, se restituirán como objetos de historia con ese valor histórico y ese valor artístico. Yo es lo que vengo manejando desde que estoy tocando un poco el tema de la exposición. Bueno, ya está. No sé si respondo, pero... Clearly, this uh, fragment is, it falls within this context of what we were just talking about. But I think we should talk about this uh, very clearly because it depend, depending on how we can lengthen the idea of cultural hegemony, that we do things very well, and that if uh, pieces come back, well, um, to the origin, uh, to the source of origin, well, who knows what will happen. I believe that we are missing the voice of, of some people. You mentioned the lack of, of people with a lack of discipline, uh, these dissonant these, uh, voices that don't have uh, an opinion that has been uh, memorized, so speaking, people who have lived a situation on the first person without being authorized voices. Some people are highly politized. I always thought that in these uh, panels, uh, it would have, well, my mother should have been there, uh, uh, an illiterate person uh, that, that had a, a lot to, to say. Many of these uh, pieces, these components, she would probably know about the traceability or uh, in a certain humanity in, in, in the origin. We were theorizing within the, this ration, this academic rational. Therefore, this is something that really disturbs me. How do we, as I said before, this, uh, the, the opinions from the top should go down to earth and the pieces down to earth should go up. I would like to see the, the, the full video because it has a lot, to, uh, they have a lot to say, but maybe we may fall in, in these uh, hegemonic uh, presentations. We have to see how these pieces should stay here. Should we uh, make a, a pseudo colonial uh, traceability that has uh, 
that, that has names and, 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 and that has a name and a last name and a source of origin. Who are the owners? Who are the museums that have the, the ownership? Or, or are they really the, the, the rightful owners? Artists that made this, uh, that made these pieces are anonymous. This is something that I would see as a very positive thing. We should probably give a name to these elements. Well, I believe that one of the big problems we have in uh, Guinea, Equatorial Guinea, is the lack of culture, the lack of... Uh, well, there's no motivation. We have to know what is the past. Intellectuals uh, in Guinea, in Equatorial Guinea, are, are, are being prosecuted. Milivina Mole, if I'm not, if I get their, their name right, well, was sent to prison. And thanks to the pressure, well, as I said before, no one will shut our voices. And that's what I want to believe. And people fought for her, and they were, then she was taken out of jail. We should foster this interest of people leaving aside intellectuals they have a clear interest but how to let people uh, in Malabo and Bata or whatever uh, become aware uh, become interested in in these situations in, in what we are witnessing right now uh, very interesting what you say one thing I forgot to tell you is that uh, well, we've been fortunate to find uh, dynamics that, that favored a discussion beyond colonialism. Well, institutionally, this connects with what some people say. How are we going to organize this? We have to find uh, partners and alliances. For example, uh, a line of, of work is with the academia this work that is being organized. The other is internally in, in the city council. Uh, there's a, uh, a department of interculturality that uh, is playing a, a, a role and is, is doing things that are helping to, to, to support these mechanisms of change. This was uh, uh, specified in a, in a project called Masks. It was like an analysis of interculturality where many critical elements uh, uh, came up in museums uh, supported this uh, and our museum supported this we were willing to, to, to collaborate with this intercultural group and one of the or some of the conclusions um, that we heard there uh, connected with what they just said this project called masks determined that museums uh, with uh, the level of compromise against egocentrism uh, and, and colonialism accommodate more to, to or, or feel for less comfortable uh, keeping these these pieces in, in their own collections sometimes forcing a, a new uh, approach sharing the ownership interculturality uh, includes a conceptualized reflex a critical uh, discourse the dialogue should be a uh, permanent not just an isolated uh, uh, element there should be equity and there should be a priority in diversity and all of the these are reflections that the museum our museum is gathering this will uh, reflect that in one way or another with some kind of a more specific set of actions and it's true evidently there is a second element well, we just keep it here and we don't do anything else that's a second way of, of or a second reading but i understand that beyond all this beyond uh, th these considerations well we understood that some pieces have to be returned to the country of origin but this doesn't have to be understood as an easy thing we should avoid falling in a danger which is this would be like saying well we return uh, we have compensated uh, down deal well not really things will always be there things like these this this will always be there the existence of these collections and the necessary reflection of these collections is like a commitment uh, an open commitment and continue an ongoing commitment 
evidently this should be approached uh, in, in a critical way uh, in a construct of constant change. Uh, let me make just a brief comment as a moderator. One is that, uh, considering what has just been said, uh, we've seen a, a fragment of a video, but uh, the panels were organized in both Malabo and Bata, and in both places we heard different opinions. <laughs> Had, uh, uh, well, he's a lawyer now, and, 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 and he had a more correct, um, structured uh, approach. But uh, we also had the privilege of, of having people both in Malabo and Lambata. People, uh, in the case of Malabo, it was, he was a, a, a gentleman who had a, a specific connection with many of the ritual objects. And when he knew, because there's there's another topic or another issue to, to, to consider, people don't have the knowledge. It's like if you go to Barcelona and you ask people about a street, maybe uh, that person will not know many uh, of the things about that street or that museum or that uh, church. But this 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 guy, uh, when, when he was asked, well, uh, he gave us a lot of information. He was just really shocked, and and the actual words were. This was an aberration. This material, sh this this heritage should be sh should not be in Barcelona. So on the one hand, uh, when, when, when uh, we evidence that this is one of the jobs that people have, which is returning things to, to uh, the country of origin, we also could see some initiatives. Uh, there, people are, who are becoming organized, people who are becoming organized to, to, you know progress with these uh, initiatives and there was a very specific initiative of people who uh, do research who study anthropology history or whatever in fact these people through or, or the first time that they see some of these objects well sometimes it's done this this first context through pictures not having real access is, 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 is another problem and research is polarized in uh, Europe and People in this case in Guinea or in Morocco cannot progress, cannot uh, uh, progress in, in their studies because they do not have access to these uh, heritage. We have a social component, not only the physical issue of uh, heritage, which is physically displaced, but rather uh, thinking considerations, etc., uh, are more difficult because they don't have access to, to this uh, patrimony, to this uh, heritage. I don't know if you would like to say anything else. Otherwise, we'll open up the Q&A session. Uh, so. uh, very briefly, I think that to me, the main objective of this project is that this is part of the political agenda, because I know that there is going to be some administrations that will invest some efforts in order to create a department of interculturality with staff that will do uh, everything possible in order to generate fantastic content. But it's not part of the political agenda of anybody. So for me, the main objective would be that besides the objectives of the project, well, this will move forward and a debate uh, is generated and society in general can also debate this. One of the things that makes me uncomfortable is interculturality. I think interculturality does not exist. It's a very theoretical, beautiful framework where all the cultures can understand among each other. I prefer to speak about transculturality because cultures do evolve. Then. If I was born in Morocco, but I arrive at the age of a couple of weeks, I consider myself more Catalan than Moroccan, uh, because in the end, my identity is the addition of many factors. I'm thinking as a hypothesis, these works of art, when are they going to be Catalan or are they ever going to be Catalan? Because people can access a certain identity, which is more or less liquid, but these works of art or maybe this colonial past cannot be accepted as such. As Jeffrey was saying, uh, we generate different narratives in order to um, forget or bypass this reality. So this is something that should be debated as well, how to recognize that Spain was a colonizing country and there were actions of plundering and expeditions. I would like to know what an expedition is 
and from here to generate a debate and to collaborate among the members of the Spanish and Catalan cosmography. Al torn al, al public. Yo puedo comenzar a hacer sí. una, una pregunta. Let me start by asking a question. I found all the whole explanation very interesting, and I wanted to ask a question related to what we've said before, which is this cultural gap. When we speak about restitution uh, in the sense of uh, the need of restituting and the existence of the need of restitution is the reflection on how art, history, and the patrimony of a certain community is in another country, because this makes it difficult for the members of this community to access knowledge about their own history. And of course, these policies have the will to expel this cultural gap. But also, through the experiences that you had explained, the existence of museums in our society does not mean that this cultural gap does not exist, because there are some bias, class bias, centralized bias, etc. So my question is the following. There is this museum, which has a patrimony, the Filipino, Guinean, Moroccan communities. But what is the previous relationship that you had with this museum, knowing these collections and also the different communities and what was the reflection from the museum not only about this reality which is obvious and this is a problem which can be uh, also applied to other reflections the question of the cultural gap meaning for example the accumulation of this patrimony uh, from one country to another, but also the reality and the existence of the institution means that here we don't have this gap related to the museum. I hope I have explained, I made myself clear. I don't know if I understood your question or comment, but of course what you say, it's true. This cultural gap does exist related to the museums. I think that the museums, this is a problem they have independently of the uh, colonial past. Uh, there are problems with the audience, the viewers, reaching people, etc. I don't know if this is what you meant. There are also some biases, cultural biases and other types of biases. If we add these biases, well, the situation becomes even worse with a more structural dimension which is what in the end does exist. Therefore, I'm thinking about the limits of the institution. From the institution, we are thinking about different practices. Maybe here we have different departments where uh, they've been fighting for all these policies. I'm thinking about the Department of Education and Communication, etc., and the public programs, Department of course, all public programs, and in a way, as they take on the organization of these debates, um, we take on also the different reflections that we mentioned, maybe we will start overcoming this. But I don't know which are the formulas that are going to be used. I'm not only thinking about the colonial aspects, but the structural aspects of the museums, the existence of this patrimony and the lack of knowledge from the communities of the existence of this legacy and also the importance of organizing these workshops in order to disseminate this knowledge and to shorten this gap. But maybe the reflection of the same institution does not mean the inexistence of this reality or reproduction. I work with young people and institutions such as a museum are spaces that are not attractive to them. They don't feel attracted uh, by these museums. Let me insist that there is a question of narration as well. And what they will encounter there, they have to be able to understand the content, even if it's in an abstract way, but in a way uh, they should be able to understand and grab. And there is a lack of references, there is a lack of benchmarking, and there is a lack of uh, racialized artists or different discourses. I don't want to fall into victimism or complaint, but I don't think uh, we're speaking about the multicultural aspects, how beautiful Barcelona is, 
but then you don't see this reflected in the institutions and it's clear that a young person is not going to see that either so the focus uh, should be on these institutions because this is where the wider gap exists to insist and to incite on the young population i also think that we make a mistake because everybody goes to the high school as uh, de Sac. everybody wants to go into the high schools to offer uh, different conferences and we are saturating uh, these institutions therefore uh, let me insist I don't think that the political agenda uh, are worried about whether these museums are empty or no they are worried that uh, on the day of the opening they can go and take the picture so they're from a cultural perspective there is a huge bias because nobody's interested in this something I would like to mention and something which is important for our debate when we speak about tribal works of art we consider uh, artisan work and not a piece of art and to me uh, this is already pointing to the differences that we establish when we know that many of the works of art of painters such as Modigliani, Picasso, Miró are under the direct influence or appropriated from this African art, tribal art. And one thing is the work of artisans and the other one is contemporary work of art. One of the business well, I don't like to use the word business, but one of the business that moves more money is tribal art. And these are works of art which are totally and completely anonymous. And people who are trading with these works of art are making profit. You cannot imagine how much profit they can make. So please be aware of, this exist of the existence of this problem and be realistic. These are also works of art and these are, uh, this is the origin of many of the works of art. Any other questions, comments? I apologize because I wanted to be brief. I don't have any questions. I think this is a very interesting project and makes me reflect about many things. But I would like to thank the members of the roundtable. I really like what you said. And I really like to see and to listen to the different experiences to speak uh, people from everywhere, but also thank you for your presence, the members of this round table. I was very interested uh, about what you said, uh, and it made me think and reflect. So thank you. I just wanted to say that. Since nobody has any question, thank you. Thank you, all of you. Hello. It's not a question, but rather a comment. At the beginning, I was explaining the work that we do from the kitchen when we document and do research about the collections that belong to this museum, of course, with very diverse uh, origins, acquisitions, etc. What happens is that I was listening to you speaking about the community and members of the communities. One of the failures of uh, many museums, but our museum now we are speaking about this, is this proximity, which is a very important line to us, but not only at the communities, because of the communities living now in Barcelona, but our next door neighbor, the effort to break this barrier, presenting museums and something to belonging to the elites. But museums should play a totally different role. And I don't care, well, I don't care, I say that in brackets, if they are visiting these rooms and they consider uh, some of the objects art, or they consider them from the point of view of functionality. I mean that I want people to appropriate these objects and to listen to us. And I don't like to use the expression community, because communities, it seems that we are speaking about uh, close uh, groups, and this does not exist in such a clear way. But let me say that this is one of the difficulties encountered by museums, and this one in particular. How can I know? the name of next door neighbor, whether she's racialized, she has eight Catalan last names, etc. And this is the work that we have to do with our citizens and to be able to say there are no barriers here, you should come, access our museum, work and do things. 
That's all. I don't know if you want to give me any answer, but it's just a comment. I thank you for this reflection about the word community, because it makes me very uncomfortable. The Maghrebian community, the Moroccan community, the Filipino community, and we wonder whether there is a Moroccan community or not. Let me tell you that you have a handicap, which is called tourism. And what happens where you are, where you are placed, is that most of the people walking by your door are tourists. Therefore, I wish we had uh, racialized neighbors or people with a Catalan last name here living in these territories. There, there are a few maybe, and they're worried uh, not to be evicted. <laughs> but yes, if I'm an expert in accessibility to museums, but I'm sure that that many practices that can favor the existence of more people. To me, one of them is that instead of mentioning Margaret Atwood or Alba Tocarzo, we should mention a writer living in the neighborhood. I think it's better if you mention a Nobel Prize than a local writer living next door. But this culture of proximity sometimes makes us forget other things and we want to place importance on things that are not so important. I wanted to, I take advantage of this opportunity to ask a question from the museum. Up until now, there has been a direct collaboration with people questioned directly by the collections existing in the museums. And this task that you have explained that you are doing of initiating this process of decolonization of the museum and the collections, etc. Up until now, has anybody joined? Or do you have any plans in the future of anybody joining this project? To the staff? Same way that Alberto has explained so far in the project Traficants, Traders, uh, this could be different. And this is the mission that we had in the GOAS, which plays an important and decisive role. So this is the question. Have you ever thought about the possibility of having this type of figure or maybe uh, somebody joining staff maybe uh, and having this diversity, which is so much needed within the team of the museum? Oh, this is part of your policies. Well. We have not thought about this yet, what Alberto has explained, and what the member of the COAS has explained as well. So this is something that uh, I found very interesting. And I think that, as I was saying, this process, it's a very initial process and also the collaboration that we have established with interculturality, which is relatively recent and it's quite fresh and new. Therefore, thinking about this type of uh, structural uh, measures, which are quite complicated, and I'm thinking about questions related to the administration in the sense that it means creating institutions, intermediate institutions, it's not simple. Uh, so I was thinking about reaching consensus with the institution to which we belong. Because I was thinking about your comments, and this is something that we have not discussed or debated. Incorporating new staff is always a problem. Not incorporating the staff in order to have, I don't know, collectives or situations or someone who is representative of this diversity. But museums are made by a few people and it's a structural problem. I think the director has already mentioned this. In fact, we are here in order to follow policies that had left us with quite an important austerity. And this is not easy to solve. And 
this is something that we should discuss. We have not discussed it yet, but it's a complex issue. Uh, we cannot approach it only from the museum, because it's an institution that depends from other structures. No more comments or questions? OK. We finished this round table. Thank you very much for your presence and for being part of this round table. And thank you for sharing these experiences. Thank you, Sarai, for all your explanations and see you tomorrow.